Welcome to Biz Africa. I'm Penina Karibe. The continent's biggest mining and construction equipment show, Belma Africa, opened in Midrand near Johannesburg on Wednesday. More than 750 exhibitors from 34 countries had their products on display, showing just how important the continent is to their businesses. But there was a word of caution about the mining sector value chain and the need to develop and support local suppliers. Procurement, especially by mining companies, can and must play an important role through supplier development to support the development of especially upstream but also downstream economic activity. More than 150 exhibitors come from China. Uh, so that underscores, of course, uh, the importance the Chinese manufacturers pay to this market here in sub-Saharan Africa as a, obviously, also for them, promising export market. Now, South Africa's automakers are struggling to build cars as the strike affecting farms that manufacture components has seen supplies of parts cut off. The shortage is adding to a string of wars in a sector already badly hit by labor unrest in the recent past. Workers in the automotive parts and retail industry, represented by the main manufacturing union, NUMSA, are protesting over low wages. The move has resulted in lower supply of key parts and components used to assemble autos. BMW's plant, for instance, has reported it lost. 7,900 vehicles from an earlier auto worker strike and expects to lose another 2,300 by the end of this week because of the shortage. The situation was, a, was similar at a plant producing Daimler AG's Mercedes Benz line. NUMSA has been pushing for double digit wage hikes and better shift allowances. The retail motor industry organization, on the other hand, says that it would struggle to meet those particular demands. Insurance density and penetration levels remain very low in China compared to the global average. With an aging population, the number of retired people is expected to exceed 200 million by the year 2020. And due to this, there is therefore need for more life, property and casualty insurance products. It is also opening a door for more investment opportunities between companies from China and the African continent at large. Martina Fuchs reports. With the global financial crisis, insurance companies from around the world started to walk the walk alone. This is what players at this year's Federation of Afro-Asian Insurers and Reinsurers Conference in Beijing are trying to change. Asia makes up a large bulk of our international business, but from now on, we're focusing more on opportunities in Africa and the Middle East, but this requires time. In the past, foreign insurance firms seeking to enter China's market have mostly set up joint ventures with Chinese partners. But it has been a struggle. According to China's insurance regulator, the mainland's top four insurers occupy a market share of up to 70 percent. China, given the large size of the population and the low penetration rates, is a highly lucrative market for foreign insurers and reinsurers. But the dominance of the local players has so far limited their expansion. The 41-member African Reinsurance Corporation, or Africa Re, and other players from the continent see strong growth potential, but say several hurdles still need to be overcome. Players on the continent are still uh, small in terms of volume of capital. So uh, you cannot enter uh, this kind of market easily with a, a very small capacity. There also needs to be a lot of cooperation between the insurance industry in Kenya as well as that in China. And there are many avenues for penetrating uh, each uh, other's industry. For example, the brokers, bro insurance brokers or reinsurance brokers here can deal with reinsurance companies in Kenya. At global auditing and advisory firm KPMG, experts believe the two markets are complementary. That's a good match for the Chinese market. Um, there's a big demand for um, certain insurance products and distribution. And the African uh, market is very good at online distribution and something called microinsurance. And there is a big demand in China. The saying, no risk, no gain, also applies to the insurance business. With China's huge consumption power, twinned with high income, analysts here foresee a particularly strong investment potential in specialist insurance. 
Martina Fox, CCTV, Beijing. President Robert Mugabe's government has received a boost after the European Union announced that it has cleared the country's Marange diamonds. A diplomat says the EU has begun the process of delisting the Zimbabwe Mining Development Corporation, ZMDC, from a sanctions list. ZMDC, which holds 50% in all diamond operations in Marange on behalf of government, conservatively projects an immediate 20% jump in revenue if it is freely allowed to trade its diamonds. With sanctions, it meant you had to negotiate a price in order to be able to sell. But now there's no negotiation for a price and it puts us in a far better position. The Marange diamonds have been hailed as the world's biggest diamond find in recent years. They had previously been mired in controversy over alleged human rights abuses, but were cleared by industry watchdog Kimberley Process in 2012. Zimbabwe has the capacity to produce 160 million carats of diamonds per year, which could potentially double global output by 2015. It is that potential that has prompted industry players to step up pressure for the removal of the trade embargoes. Last week, Brussels broke ranks with the European bloc, calling for removal of restrictions on ZMDC to increase global trade. The United States is maintaining sanctions on Zimbabwe, which could still hinder free trade since any U.S. dollar transactions are intercepted by the U.S. government. Over $30 million destined for local diamond producers have been frozen in the U.S. There will be uh, those that will be affected, but at least there are still other currencies that we can deal with, which are not U.S. dollars. So our, our major uh, advantage at the moment is that we have got access to the market. President Mugabe is pinning growth of the economy and recovery of key sectors on diamond revenue. Farai Mwakutuya, CCTV, Harare, Zimbabwe. You're watching Bees Africa. Let's take a short break, but don't go far. We'll be back with plenty more. Is Asia. Asia means business. back to Biza Africa. Now if you live in South Africa, you have three choices when seeking medical attention. You can either pay for your own costs or join a medical aid scheme where you get a list of benefits for which you pay a monthly retainer. You can also opt to go to a state hospital where you pay a reduced fee. CCTV's Angela Coppola now reports on a planned medical aid scheme for lower income earners. The perceived gap between the level of treatment patients receive from a private and state hospital is large. In fact, the state has been trying for some time now to get the state hospitals up to scratch so that more South Africans can join the network. I don't have medical aid. It's, it's too expensive. Um, but I am on my mom's plan. Uh, that just works out so much better and more cost effective for me because I really can't afford it. And I don't even use it all that much. Um, I don't go to the doctor all that often. So it would be very pointless for me to be on my own plan money that I don't even have for something I don't even use all that often. 84 percent of South Africans still don't have medical aid cover. Uh, if you look at the Council for Medical Schemes report, 3.7 million uh, taxpayers belong to a medical scheme with additional 4.8 million as dependents. So there's a lot of scope for more South Africans um, uh, you know, who, who are uh, taxpayers to take advantage of uh, the contribution credit system which is now effective. While the uptake by consumers remains unclear, 
technically the new medical scheme tax credit system does make sense, analysts say, and can make a difference to personal bottom lines and consumers. It would now work similarly to a primary and a secondary rebate, which is below the line, whereas previously taxpayers were entitled to a medical scheme deduction, which was above the line as part of the income tax calculation. Self-funding medical costs is a pipe dream for most South Africans, and medical scheme membership has been the preserve of the middle and upper classes. The new system may well prove the catalyst to get those lower income earners into the medical cover mainstream and into private health care. I'm Angelo Coppola for CCTV in Johannesburg. Let's take you back to Zimbabwe, where President Robert Mugabe's government has received a boost after the EU announced that it has cleared the country's Maranga Dam. Once a diplomat says the European Union has begun the process of delisting the Zimbabwe Mining Development Corporation from a sanctions list. And let's get more details from Sandra Gathman. She's like for us in Brussels. Sandra, good to have you with us. So why do we have the about turn by the EU so soon after it expressed concerns of irregularities in the July vote in Zimbabwe? Have we? Well, investigations have been going on as to which entities in Zimbabwe may have been directly involved in the alleged electoral fraud. And so far, it seems the EU admits there isn't hard evidence uh, so far proving that. Now, it's also understood that Belgium, the world's uh, biggest diamond trading country, has played a huge role as well in convincing its EU partners that the ZMDC mining group did not belong on the sanctions list. And we heard an e uh, EU UK spokesman uh, say today as well that the decision was a question of showing solidarity at an EU level as well when it came to punishing the Zimbabwe regime given the violence we saw surrounding uh, that electoral win. So Sandra, the EU had targeted ZMDC over allegations that it was associated with the ZANU-PF faction of government. Has this perce perception now changed? Well, I think what's happened is that there's uh, been a failure to collect enough evidence to prove that was the case. But I do think that there's some level of suspicion still there. Certainly, the Global Witness Campaign Group that's based in London believes that this was a rush decision on behalf of the EU, that uh, they've maintained that ZMDC's Diamond Ventures have always, an, in an indirect way, financed President Mugabe's alleged rigging of the polls. And they say the EU should have been given more time to investigate those claims. And finally, Sandra, are we likely to see more sanctions being lifted on Zimbabwe going by this move? Uh, well, we know that uh, Britain, for instance, uh, a member of the EU, is firmly against that. We've already seen that the lifting of the ZMDC uh, diamond sanctions, uh, they say, was a wrong move. And uh, the UK will push to keep other sanctions against President Mugabe and nine others uh, close to him firmly in place, namely the travel bans and asset freezes against them. And they'll be the uh, main pioneers pushing to keep those in place uh, when it comes time for their uh, to debate their renewal uh, around next February time. Oh, well, Sandra Gathman, their life for us in Brussels. Thanks, Sandra, for these perspectives. Well, now to a rather interesting story. Microsoft's co-founder Bill Gates has once again topped the list as the richest man in the United States. According to Forbes, Gates is estimated to be worth a whooping $72 billion, with Microsoft accounting for only one-fifth of his overall wealth. According to reports, most of his money comes from his other investments, notably his firm Cascade, which owns large shares in Deere and Company. Company, the Canadian National Railway and Mexican Coke bottler FEMSA. Warren Buffett, whose net worth is $58.5 billion, ranked number two on the Forbes list. Other big winners include Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg, whose stock holdings made him $9.6 billion in 2013, helping him rejoin the top 20 list of richest Americans after dropping out last year. Now, Mozambique plans to sign gas production contracts with Italy's Eni and Houston-based Anadaku by July next year. According to the country's mining minister, the deal should ensure that gas from the country's lucrative Ravuma Basin starts flowing by 2018. The former Portuguese colony is rushing to produce gas from the offshore basin by the end of this decade. It's competing with existing producers elsewhere, keen to expand and newly emerging ones, especially from North America. Analysts and other industry players have raised questions 
questions about Mozambique's ability to get production off the ground that quickly, where the minister said that plans for production are moving along swiftly. Right, let's have a look now at the closing numbers for you this Wednesday. As we always do, the four major bosses will be tracking the continent. The Nigeria All Share Index ending the day in the red with about a quarter of a percent. The JSE ending the day in the red as well with almost one percent. Uh, Nairobi Securities Exchange in the green with about a quarter of a percent. And the EGX ending in the red with 0.59 percent. That's it for Biz Africa. Thanks for watching. Pictures back to you.